Clear off your messy or out of control kitchen counter in only three steps. Our kitchen counter has gotten completely out of control recently because, well, I'm pregnant with our second baby and we have a five-year-old, so chores have gotten put a little bit on the back burner right now because sometimes you just gotta nap. You know if you've been pregnant before. I'm gonna take you through the three steps that I do when our kitchen counter has gotten out of control. This is how you can take control of your kitchen counter, whether it's gotten really overwhelming or even just a little messy. Don't feel bad if things have gotten out of control because I think everyone has experienced a messy kitchen counter before. It just happens, life happens, so let's tackle it. Step one, return items to their homes. These are items that already have designated homes so you know exactly where they belong and where to return them to. These are items that you probably placed on your counter throughout the week, maybe when you got home or just didn't put them away when you knew maybe you should have, but place them on the counter instead. It happens, those are the items you're going to tackle first. Beerhoff Bumblebee, and this is my heat pack that I use when I need a little bit of relief and shouldn't have placed them on the counter. Charging device and another charger. I know exactly where they go. These are directions for Caleb's new bed. I'm not sure if Tom still needs these, if he's doing any finishing touches, so I will place these for later. We'll get to these. Some of Caleb's drawings, again, we'll get to these in a little bit. Recycling. Caleb's artwork. This is some of his homeschool work that we are still going to do, so I'm going to put that in the homeschool cabinet. Tom's notebook. Lego kits that were taken apart and that need to be put in the garage where we store them. Some of Caleb's schoolwork that needs to get put away, some of it's completed, and some of it's his schoolwork books for his homeschooling. More homeschool work. Short term paper storage that needs to get put away. These were left on the counter after I did Tom and Caleb's haircut, so these need to get returned to their homes. This was from when we were measuring Caleb's head size for a new hat. with camera items that need to be returned to their homes. Some of Caleb's magazines that need to be put in the bathroom. That completes the first step and look at how much of a difference just returning items to their homes makes. So much of the clutter on our kitchen counters ends up being items that already have a home, we just didn't put them where they're meant to be right away and place them on the kitchen counter instead. It's so easy to do, but getting into that habit of just putting it away right away instead of on the kitchen counter can be such a game changer in keeping the kitchen clutter free. Step two, easy action items. These are any items that are easy to take action on, such as going through the mail, processing a store return and placing it in the car, trash or recycling if you didn't already take care of that in step number one, or dealing with any broken items. Anything that's easy and you can take action on right away, that's gonna be an easy action item. If it feels too overwhelming, wait till step three. Mail to go through. I like to take the mail over by the shredder, so if there's anything to shred, I can shred it right away. Store return. This is Caleb's and it's broken, so this needs to either go in the trash or recycling. This is broken and needs to be recycled. These are items that arrived from Amazon and need to be tried on. Most of these flowers are already dead, but I'm going to save the few that I can. That completes step number two, and as you can see, a big difference as well. So there's still quite a few items left, so we're gonna be moving on to step number three. 
Step three, harder action items. These are gonna be any items that feel a little bit harder to take action on. Maybe they feel a little bit overwhelming, but I'm hoping it's gonna feel a little less overwhelming because you're gonna have fewer items on your counter than what you started with. So even though they are the harder items that are left, there's a lot less to deal with hopefully, and so it should hopefully feel a little bit more manageable at this point. These are gonna be items such as newer items that don't have a home, or even just items that have been floating around your house for a while, but you never designated a home for. These could be items that you borrowed from family or friends that you need to return to them. You might have a lot of kids' artwork. I have a ton of kids' artwork on my counter. I do have a system for some of Caleb's artwork, but not his 3D artwork creations or any creations that are a little bit larger, um, larger paper size or just larger in general. So I've had to create a new system for that. So that's been a little bit overwhelming and ended up on our kitchen counter until I dealt with that. So this is the time to deal with those harder items, but remember it's okay if it feels a little bit overwhelming, just take it one item at a time, and before you know it, you're gonna have a clutter-free kitchen counter. These are some newer items that need to be put in their home with other nail products. Another newer item that needs to have a home. This needs to be returned to my parents. Some of this is Caleb's artwork that does have a home, but I needed to reorder it, make sure it's in the right order before I put it in its home. So that's why it was in the harder action item. Some of these items are more just like scraps of paper. There are things that Caleb was like working on. So I just need to double check that he's finished with these before I get rid of them. If you have any items that need to be dealt with by another family member, maybe your husband or wife or kids, maybe they need to put it away or you need to ask them, you could use a post-it note with their name on it and make a little pile just for them and so then it doesn't get mixed in. You don't wanna be making lots of piles, but it's one thing if that family member is not currently home. Some of Caleb's items to add to his pile. Some of Caleb's creations that I need to ask him if he's still using or if he's finished with. Some of the 3D creations that Caleb might want photos of, so I'll be placing those to take photos. One of the bigger creations that I need to take a photo of. Artwork that I need to take a photo of. Another artwork I need to take a photo of. This is one of Caleb's toys that we are saving for the baby, so I need to put this with the baby's toys. This is part of something that Tom is fixing, so I need to put that with Tom's pile so he can deal with that. And these are Caleb's items to put away. And it's clear! The kitchen counter is clean and clutter free. It's such a calming feeling. I just absolutely love it when the kitchen counters are clutter free. And remember, you can always come back to these three steps whenever you need to, no matter how little of a mess you have on your kitchen counter or how big of a mess because they approach and tackle the items that so often end up on our counters on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And even if they aren't items that often end up on your counter, these three steps tackle it because all you have to do is put it in one, two, or three of the steps and you can handle that clutter too. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. I would love to see you on my next video.